Thanks, everybody. Welcome to the Art of Listening to Your Body podcast. My name is Jin Ong, and I'm your host. I practice as an osteopath and psychosomatic therapist, and I'm fascinated by the mind-body connection and how your physical body is a manifestation of your emotional state. I help people get unstuck from their chronic pain and live the life they want grounded in values and driven by purpose. My aim is to create awareness to the underlying emotions behind pain, injury and disease in the body. Join me to learn more about the story of your body, what different issues may indicate, how to release emotions so that you can prevent problems, as well as inspiring pain story interviews. Today I'm going to share a process with you that I use with my clients when I'm working with them in person or online and it's also a little technique that I get them to continue in between our sessions and hopefully a lifelong tool that they can utilize to continue to discharge those pent-up emotions that have been stored in their body and causing them their physical discomfort or those issues that they're not healing from. So remember, I always share that the physical body is a manifestation of your emotional state and that the experiences that you have and the emotions that are tied to these experiences don't always get an opportunity to be expressed. They get stored in the body or suppressed and they become a source of stress, which over time builds up and can manifest as those physical aches and pains or recurrent injuries or disease states. So when I start to dig deeper behind people's physical issues and start to uncover the emotions that might be at play, they have this light bulb moment where they realize they've got a lot of emotions like anger, sadness, or grief. And it's related to a friend, a family member, or a work colleague. So in this moment, they acknowledge this and they get really excited and think that the next best move is to go and talk to that person about it and sort through the problems. If you find yourself in this situation, there's a few reasons why I don't think that confronting the person straight away is such a good idea. It may not work in your favor. So the first scenario, is that you may be doing all of this personal development work and improving your emotional expression and you're seeing the benefits of it and you want this other person to experience it as well. And you think that talking to them and resolving your issues will help. However, emotionally, they may not be able to meet you where you're at on your personal growth pathway. So you go and talk to them and they just shut you down and you get nowhere. And this could be that they're just not aware that they can work on themselves in this way or they're just not prepared to do this work right now. It's just not their time. The other scenario is that the person you're having issues with mentally may not be able to process this information. This happens when people want to deal with their parents who may be getting older And they might have neurological issues like Alzheimer's or dementia, or maybe they've had a stroke. So that person can't comprehend what you're saying to them and they may not be able to communicate back to you. Or mentally, they're just not very stable at all. The third scenario is that you aren't actually able to talk to that person. They're no longer in your life and you don't know how to contact them or how to find them. This situation can come up with adoption where people can't track down their biological parents or maybe the situation where they've been disowned from family or people have just decided to go their own separate paths and not actually contact one another. Or it can also be that the person is deceased or passed away. So they're no longer in your life, but you may still have issues that were unresolved from your past and you've never had an opportunity to deal with it. 
So it may be that over time, you do actually have a conversation with the person involved. However, I want to teach you a process where you can actually discharge a lot of emotion without ever having to involve that person. And this is particularly useful if the person that you have issues with is not in your life anymore because they've passed away or you just don't have contact with them. In the event that you do have this conversation with them, when you go through this process, you can usually shift a lot of the negative emotions and therefore the conversation you have with the person is a lot more peaceful and you're a lot more approachable and they'll actually hear you out and hear you for what you have to say. Now, a really basic example would be the argument that you walked away from. Maybe you didn't have the words, you couldn't stand up for yourself. And then afterwards, what happens is you just can't stop thinking about this argument and the things that the person said to you and what you weren't able to say back to them. So you get stuck in your head, you get all this emotion, you get all these sensations in your physical body that aren't that pleasant. Uh, it also could be that you're feeling quite nervous talking to someone. It could be that you need to go and speak to your boss about wanting a change in your work situation or maybe a pay rise and you don't want to stuff it up. So what I find is that a lot of people get stuck in their head thinking all the time and what they forget to do is verbalize it out loud. So in these little scenarios of that argument that you walk away from or maybe going to go talk to your boss, you can use this process. Just find a space. Maybe you're driving in your car and you just speak out loud or you just do it at home. So what you want to do in this verbal dialogue process is you want to get all the stumbles, the mumbles and all the negativity out. You want to say what you really wanted to say in that argument. And it's a good way of practicing if you do need to go back and speak to that person and say, this is actually what I did want to say. In the scenario of going to talk to your boss, you get all those jitters out and get those nerves out. And maybe you realize when you practice this at home in your own space, verbalizing out loud that what you want to say doesn't actually sound that great. So you get that opportunity to practice and refine what you want to say. So this is how you can start using this process day to day before you're going to go and speak to a person, practice it out loud. Now, when it comes to resolving issues in the past that are still burning inside of you, this is the process. You want to start visualizing that incident or that experience that perhaps didn't quite go right or when things happened and you didn't get to say what you wanted in that moment. What I want you to do is imagine that person is in front of you. So bring that experience into your mind's eye as long as it's not too traumatic and you can sit with the sensation of it. And you're going to speak out loud what you really want to say to them. It can be whatever you feel. It doesn't have to be nice. As I say to a lot of my clients when I'm taking through them through this process, I say, you can say all the immoral things, all the nasty things you want to. It doesn't matter because you're not actually saying it to them in real life. If they were here, then that wouldn't be so great that would be causing harm to that person. That would be verbal abuse, but you're not actually saying anything to that person in real life. So you use this opportunity to get all of those words and all of those feelings out. With repetition, people often find that they have a lot less emotion or aggression and they find the right words to communicate what they really mean. So they get all the crap, all the rubbish and all the harmful words out and they find the words that the other person can receive and actually hear. Another scenario that's just popped into my head is that you're really angry at someone and you write this nasty email. Instead of hitting send straight away, 
read over it, give it some time and realize how you can take out the bits that aren't really necessary and maybe a bit harmful and communicate in a much more effective way. However, let's go back to verbal dialogue. So you're going to speak out loud everything that you really feel about that person, no matter how nasty or immoral it is that you feel. Now, you're not going to say it to their face. So the reason I teach this process to people or I get them to do it in front of me is that speaking out loud helps to discharge a lot of energy around that incident or that experience. And after people do this, they may not feel as compelled to actually have to go and confront that person anymore. So going through this verbal dialogue process by themselves is enough to resolve that issue and they can move on. Or they go through this process and they find those right words and they can have a much more pleasant conversation and feel like they really stand up for themselves. Now, if you want to take this a step further, you can do a two-way conversation with the person involved, but again, you're not actually going to have the real person in front of you. So hopefully you can keep track with me here. Again, you want to drop in and visualize that person, bring them into your mind's eye and remember that scenario. Now, this is about rewriting the story and having them speak the words to you that you wish you would have heard at the time, as well as giving you the opportunity to say what you didn't get to say at the time. So this is about what you really want to hear from them. So you're going to have a two-way conversation out loud. What you're going to do is the same as earlier on, you're going to verbalize out loud, whatever you want to say, get all those nasties out, say what you feel and don't worry because you're not actually saying it to them. The next step is that you're going to have that person speak back to you the words that you actually want to hear. Now, this is where some people can stumble a little bit and they find it slightly awkward but it's really important that you speak as if you are the other person speaking back to you i hope that makes sense so keep going with the dialogue and often what people notice is that a sensation builds up in their body so if they're talking about how hurt they feel they might feel a lot of tension around their chest or maybe they struggle to find the words and their throats start to get blocked up so when you're going through this process, constantly check in with your body and see if you feel any of these sensations. It can be anywhere in your body. And if you feel sensation, this should motivate you to keep on going. This is when I know if someone is feeling sensation in their body that I need to keep pushing them to keep speaking. I'll say to them, there's something else that you really want to say that you're not speaking up about, or what is it that you really want to hear from that person? And I know that things have shifted because either they'll get the emotional release, it might be the tears, or they might get the physical release where the body starts to twitch or tremble. And you might get this when you're doing it yourself at home, or it can be that physiological release where you can feel your heart racing or maybe you break out in a sweat. So if you feel this sensation going on in your body, keep going back and forth and just really allow yourself to express and say the words that you really want and also the words that you want to hear back from that other person. And when you feel that block or sensation has shifted, that's usually when you know that you've likely processed the emotions around that situation and resolved it. And you can go back and you can speak about that scenario and you don't feel as much discomfort around that situation. 
Okay, so that was the two-way dialogue. It's a little bit more complicated to comprehend and it is the process that most people need a little bit of help with. So you might need to listen over this a few times to get the knack of this verbal dialogue process and just be that crazy person that speaks to yourself. Again, make the time, make the space to do this. Do it at home, do it in the shower, do it when you're driving in the car and don't worry about what other people think because you're in your own space and no one can really see you anyway. So first of all, we went through the one way verbal dialogue where you just speak out loud as if that person is in front of you. And if you want to take it a step further, particularly if you are working on experiences where you have no contact with that person anymore or they passed away, try and facilitate the two way verbal dialogue process where you speak to that person and say what you want to say but then you have them speak back to you what you would like to hear. So this is a way of rewriting that story and allowing that emotion to get expressed that never had an opportunity to come up at the time. The two-way process also allows you to come from this place of understanding. A lot of the time people don't speak up and say what it is they really feel. So this is your opportunity to go through this process, release some of your emotions and observe the changes that happen in your physical body. If you're keen to learn more about the mind-body connection, this Thursday, 3rd of September, I'm running a live masterclass at 12 p.m. New Zealand time. I'm going to be taking you over the basic Vedic doshas and understanding your constitution when it gets out of balance and some basic remedies to bring yourself back into balance. I'll also be going over some common physical presentations and the underlying emotions that I notice come up. And I'll be opening up to live Q&A where you can jump on and ask about your own physical issues and get an interpretation on the spot to create more awareness around what it is you may need to work on. This is open to everybody. If you can join me, you do need to register for the event. It's called Beyond the Inbox. You can find it at theartoflisteningtoyourbody.com forward slash beyond hyphen the hyphen inbox and I will pop that link in the podcast notes if you happen to listen to this podcast in time. However, if you miss that and you are a practitioner, I am opening the wait list to my emotional body training program again. We will be starting October the 8th and I will be running a live webinar on September the 17th. I'm yet to release more details. However, if you are interested in delving more into the mind-body connection, the emotions behind physical issues and being able to delve into that with your clients and help them release the emotions that keep them stuck with their physical problems or their disease states, then I would love you to jump on board and find out more information about this. And you can find this at theartoflisteningtoyourbody.com forward slash emotional hyphen body. So that's to be added to the wait list and you'll get more information about the webinar and the training in your inbox soon. Thank Thanks for learning with me on the Art of Listening to Your Body podcast. If you like what you've heard, I would love if you could rate, review and share with your friends. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram. My handle is The Art of Listening to Your Body. You can join my free Facebook group where I go live regularly to teach you about different conditions and the deeper underlying emotions at play.